Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for, for the invitation to this very first debate of the European Internet Forum. Um, UITP, the International Association for Public Transport, um, we have 300 members from all over the world. They are operators, they are authorities, they are industry, they could manufacturers, equipment manufacturers, the IT industry. And we have a growing number also of, uh, of platforms and providers of uh, other uh, mobility services which are members of our association. Um, I'd like to thank you for this invitation on the future of urban mobility, uh, because in case uh, anyone had me out, that still means that we are part of the future of urban mobility as public transport, and um, I take it as a, as a, as a significant message. Uh, we were a part of the past, uh, when we developed the public transport networks, rail and buses. Uh, we are very much part of the present in the EU with a growing ridership, um, and we are more than ever convinced that uh, even in this, in this very changing environment, in this changing ecosystem, new ecosystem, public transport is and remain, will remain and has to remain actually the backbone of the urban transport system. If we want our urban transport systems to be efficient, first of all efficient, sustainable and make our cities more, uh, more livable, um, we should two positions uh, relate to this, one mainly uh, which you can find uh, on the on public transport, the heart of the urban mobility system, which you can find uh, at um, at the back of uh, uh, of the room. Um, technology has enabled the emergence of new actors, new mobility services. Uh, we know that well. I won't go through this. We probably have the most emblematic of these new players in the room, so that makes the dialogue uh, easier from this perspective. Um, when we say public transport has to be the backbone and should be reinforced. This is not an exclusive statement, it is an, an inclusive statement. We believe that there is room for everyone. We believe that we should be work on our complementarity with everyone. That means between public transport, active mode of transport, and I very much support uh, all statements uh, supporting walking and cycling, which are not, they are full modes of transport uh, uh, as the other ones, with uh, ride sharing, with car sharing, with bike sharing. There is room for everyone. Of course, there is competition at some point in the margin, but that's okay. Um, and uh, and we believe so, so. We very much welcome the uh, the emergence of uh, of new actors. Um, and our organization is open uh, uh, actually uh, to them, whatever they are, whether they are operators, whether they are platforms, B two B providers of mobility services, B two C more on the, some type of Uber uh, services. Um, peer to peer services, uh, non profit peer to peers, uh, we, which we will probably see emerging, any, any type of factors, any type of new services which make sense and uh, which allow to move towards a more efficient urban transport system uh, is a good one. Um, except one, of course, which is the single use of a privately owned car. That's the issue. I mean, uh, and I won't go back to uh, 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 what the, the gentleman from Uber. Um, said before. So all combination can provide interesting options and probably depending on the local situations the options can vary, the complementary can vary, the role of the various actors can vary. We ourselves have a transport operator uh, sector, our members, public transport operators are providing some in some cases are trying to provide ride sharing services or partnering with companies such as VIA for instance which is a ride sharing company which is providing ride sharing to Keolis uh, 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 in, in some cities, so we are looking into this. How can we make this move forward in the right direction? Um, I, I have four keywords. Um, the first one is keep repeating the old recipes uh, because they are not used enough. First of all, demand management, the policy, whether it's about land use uh, and the allocation of land, which is very important, uh, which involves also parking, for instance, whether it's about um, working on the cost of using certain modes of transport, this remains essential. The second, the second thing is integration, moving towards a more integrated urban transport system, integrated from the city or the, uh, or the, uh, or the, um, the business perspective, but also integ and especially integrated from the customer perspective, so that there is easy access to a wide range of mobility services, so that the management of these mobility services, the coordination exists somewhere, um, uh, uh, and the laws for an efficient co um, uh, complementarity. 
And the third one uh, uh, is, uh, is partnerships. Um, nobody will provide everything everywhere. Uh, so we have to work on partnerships. I mentioned the example of Curtis. Um, so to be fair, we have to mention Transdev and look at the partnership they're doing on autonomous vehicles, uh, for instance, with, with Peugeot. Uh, but we are committed to work more on these uh, on these um, on these partnerships. Um, and uh, I have to welcome, uh, as another example, uh, the fact since you're in the room that Uber is uh, part of the mobility service platform provided by the city of Vienna. Uh, that's an example of very good partnership. Um, that uh, you um, also started to provide transit information, so schedule, uh, in some cities a couple of weeks ago. This is an example of complementarity, it's an example of potential partnership. Um, to be fair, I should say also, I mentioned Via before, and uh, where you could see that Lyft is doing also in many cities. It's not, it's or, so we should look, look in this direction. It's not, it's not true everywhere. I think Uber, Uber, Uber movement is a bit shy uh, right now. So uh, uh, it, could be, it could be better. It's not always easy, so I don't want to describe a very a rose, a pink picture, um, but it is essential. If we don't go with these partnerships, it will not happen. And the fourth keyword is mobility as a service platform. Uh, because at the end of the day, if you want to provide this integrated mobility solution to the customer, which can compete with the ease of use of the car, you need to provide it in a simple, comprehensive way. And that's mobility as a service. It's not the grail, the holy grail, because sometimes that's what we hear a little bit, but it, is very, uh, but it is very important. And what is it? It's a provision of transport services, all transport services available through one platform, and you get your bill at the end of the month. It's your, what you do with your mobile phone, that's what you do for, for mobility. And it's not a dream, it exists. It exists in Vienna, it exists in, uh, in Hanover, uh, Movel, which is a subsidiary of Daimler, is providing it in a few cities. So we also have different models. We have private operators providing it. We have car manufacturers provide, providing it. You have Mass Global uh, as a new company in, uh, in, uh, in Finland providing it. And you have public transport operators also providing it. That's an example. Depending on the situation, I think right now what is important that the message to the EU is that we leave also the space for all these initiatives to develop. Um, uh, and there may be different models, and that's not a bad thing. Let's see what happens. Um, if you understand the message. Um, um, one word, then, um, all this is even more important with the advent of auto autonomous vehicles. Um, autonomous vehicles are an opportunity to move towards a more virtuous use of the, of the vehicles, but that means a shared use. We have various scenarios. There's a nightmare scenario where you have an average occupancy of the, of the vehicle, which is below one. So you will have traffic jam with, not, with some empty vehicles. It's not crazy. It's actually the most likely one, if you look at the evolution. But you also have the virtuous one with shared vehicles. Um, and to encourage this, we need to have what I talked about before. We need the integration. We need the partnerships. And we need mobility um, as a service. And the last word, cities and authorities have a major role to play, operators as well. Um, we have to encourage them to invest in data. And all of, uh, all of this is a lot about change. So we have to encourage them to be more ready for change. Um, if you think uh, Uber and the likes are disruptive, look at what's happening uh, at, uh, with bike sharing in China, for instance. Um, we need to make sure they're equipped to, um, to adapt to change. Sorry if I was a little bit too long. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.